Everyone, good afternoon, and welcome back to our latest episode of Musical Musings. This program airs every Wednesday at 1 p.m. We broadcast the program from Rajamakon University of Technology, Pranakon. I'll be bringing you this program in two parts. In our first part, I'm going to introduce a song to you. We will talk about its main themes, and we will talk about the band or the singer. That does the song. And again, we'll talk about the main themes, like what the song is basically about. Then we're going to listen to the song. And in our second part, we will go through the lyrics and we will focus on anything that might be a little bit difficult to understand, any difficult vocabulary or sayings. Then we'll get to the news and the latest updates from the university as usual. Musical, musings, musical, musings, musical, musings, musical, musings. Welcome, everyone. I'm Gary Gray, and I am your host for Musical Musings. I'm an American English teacher. Who has been here at Rachamakan University of Technology, Pranakan, for the last six and a half years? So I'll be hosting this program for you, and our song that we're going to be doing this week is called Freebird from Leonard Skinner. d They spell that a little bit weirdly. If you want to look up the band name, Leonard Skinner, d it is spelled L Y N Y R D. S K Y N Y R D. They really love their Ys. <laughs>、uh, so that's the name of the band. There is a name in English called Leonard. It's usually not spelled that way, but it's called Leonard. That has, nothing, that has nothing to do with the name of the band. There's no one in the band named Leonard. All right, so let's get right to it. This is a very long song, so we're going to go through. Our first and second parts pretty quickly here because we do have a long song in between to listen to.、Uh, that does not mean the lyrics are long. The lyrics are fairly short. There's a big, long guitar solo at the end of the song. Okay, so let's talk about Leonard Skinner first. They were formed in 1964. As you know, I like to do old bands here on this program. So they were formed in 1964. And they were formed in Jacksonville, Florida, which is in the US. And that's in the northern part of Florida. Many of you who are familiar with Florida might know Miami, it's a big city. Or maybe you know Orlando because that's where Disney World is. Jacksonville is further north in Florida. Okay, so when they formed in 1964, Ronnie Van Zant was their lead vocalist. Now, they did go by different names all the way up until 1969. So, really, they weren't actually Leonard Skinner d until 1969. And they released their first album in 1973. And by that time, most of the original band members were gone. And then, most of them left again within the next few years. So, Ronnie Van Zant. Really was the face of Leonard Skinner. d When you think of Leonard Skinner, d you think of Ronnie Van Zant. d He was the only one there for that whole time. So the band was extremely popular in the mid 1970s,、uh, but you can see that that's a pretty short time, right? I just told you their first album was 1973. So mid 1970s, that's right around then. So they had Freebird, they had another song called Sweet Home Alabama. Another song called That Smell. Those were kind of their three biggest hits. It all came to a quick end in 1977. You may wonder how that's possible. Because these songs that I mentioned, I just mentioned three of them, but Free Bird and Sweet Home Alabama, especially, were extremely popular. Free Bird, because the song is so long, sometimes didn't get all the playtime on the radio.、Um, so Sweet Home Alabama actually became more popular. 
although a lot of people actually prefer Freebird. They think that's a better song. But, it, but as far as official popularity, uh, Sweet Home Alabama was a little bit more popular. So why did this all end so fast in 1977? Well, sadly, there was a plane crash, and it killed Van Zant. It also killed one of the other band members, uh, a, a member who was fairly important. Um, he was kind of like the second most important band member there. And it injured a bunch of other members of the band as well. So that pretty much ended it. That was it for Leonard Skinner. They did come back in 1987, and they're actually still around today, even though they did a farewell tour like several years ago. Um, I guess they weren't really saying farewell. They're still around. But obviously, it's not the original group. Ronnie Van Zant is gone, so how are they doing it? Well, it's really not a bad band now. It's pretty good because what they've done is they used his brother. So that's not bad. That's not bad. So he's got so, sort of a similar voice, things like that. So he's, he's pretty good at it. So they have um, uh, Johnny Van Zant on lead vocals now instead of Ronnie Van Zant. So it's not a bad band, but, you know, it's still not the same thing. It's not the same as it was. <clears throat> so they've never really regained that popularity back. And a lot of the songs that they perform in concert are a lot of their older songs because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear Sweet Home Alabama. They want to hear Free Bird, all those sorts of songs. Uh, so now as far as their genre, you know I don't really like talking about genres because they can get mixed. And in fact, this is one where they do. But they actually created their own genre. It is now a genre that people talk about. People know what it is. And really, Leonard Skinner was one of the first to do it. I'm not sure they were the first. There were several that came out around the same time um, and were kind of similar. But they were one of the first to come out with a genre called Southern Rock. It's rock music, but it's definitely got kind of a country vibe to it. There are a lot of other bands that do that. I mean, and, and nowadays, most country music isn't like the old style of country music. Most of it has some rock element in it. So music that we just call country music now, a lot of that is more like southern rock. Not all of it. There, there were certainly some kind of more mellow, sad-sounding singers out there who that would be more like just country. Um, but someone like Garth Brooks, who is very popular. I believe we did one of his songs on here. I believe we did Thunder Rolls on this program. He just calls himself a country singer. That's really country rock, which is almost the same as southern rock. Country rock and southern rock are very similar. There is a little bit of a different sound when you're talking about the southern music. Sometimes they'll use a little bit uh, different, uh, different uh, types of instruments. Just like you can get uh, music that comes from the Appalachian Mountains in the U.S. where they might tend to use a banjo more often. Or uh, even a fiddle, although the fiddle can be used in the South sometimes too. But you have someone like the Charlie Daniels Band who really liked to use the fiddle. They were more like from the Appalachians. They were up in North Carolina, which is further north. In case you don't know what the Appalachians are, it's just a set of mountains in the eastern U.S., it's very country style, kind of old fashioned, um, but it doesn't really have that southern country feel. Um, it's, it's it's a little bit different. Okay, so their genre is southern rock, and like I said, it's kind of a genre they almost created. Again, I say almost. There were a few other bands doing it, but they were one of the first. Okay, so let's talk about the song. Like I said, we got to move along quickly here. So the song, the name of the song is Freebird. It did come out on their very first album in 1973, but it wasn't released as a single until 1974. You may wonder, what the heck does that mean? Why does that matter? Okay, that's important. Remember the technology back then. People were using vinyl records, and that was pretty much it. There weren't cassette tapes. Actually, I think cassette tapes started coming out around then. But most radio stations wouldn't use a cassette tape. That's even harder to deal with than a, than a record. And so most radio stations, they're not going to play off of one of those larger records called an LP 
because you have to place the needle down in the perfect spot and then lift the needle up when the song's over. That's re- that's that's really hard to do. You're not going to do that. They're going to play the smaller records called a 45. That's a single. So basically, the radio stations couldn't even hardly play Freebird in 1973 when it came out. There, there are. I think there were some ways that they would do that. I, I, I'm not an expert on radio stations. I think there were some ways they could do that, and maybe there were some demos, like like some test albums that were out there that maybe that some radio stations had. So I'm sure it probably did get some playtime on the radio in 1973. Otherwise, it would have never become popular enough for them to issue the single in 1974. So I'm sure it was played a little bit, but it wasn't played very much. So it actually didn't gain its popularity right away. This happened a lot back then. We've had several songs on this program that we've talked about that were like that. It's really weird because these days, nowadays, when music is so accessible, a song comes out and then it's immediately popular. Because then you can just stream it, whatever. You can just listen to that song rather than having a whole record you have to listen to. So to, so the way technology is today, it's much different. So back then, you could actually have a song that's been out for months and then suddenly becomes popular. And that's what happened here with Freebird. It was issued in 1973. But the single didn't come out until 1974, and it didn't actually even reach its peak popularity until the beginning of 1975. That's when it got into the top 20 in the U.S., in January of 1975. All right. Like I said, we need to move along quickly. We've already probably spent a little too much time here on our first part. So talking about the song itself, what it's about, that we can do quickly. It's a very simple song. Freebird. If you had to guess what it's about, you'd probably be right. No, it's not actually about a bird. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit in the second part as far as how we use that saying in America and in the West. But it's about being free. It's really as simple as that. It's about freedom. That's it. And it's kind of a big thing in America and in the American South, where these guys are from, I'm not really, I'm not really so sure. I'd say that it's more free down there. It's probably less free, but generally, most Southerners tend to think they're more free. So it's a really big deal in the Southern U.S., even though they're not, even though they're less free than the Northerners. I think. Uh, but anyway, so it, it's a big deal in southern part of America, the idea of freedom. So that's why they did the song. And it's just what it sounds like. It's about freedom. The song is a really good collaboration by the band members. A lot of t- I, I, And every song is going to be a collaboration of the band members, right? They all have to get together, and a vocalist is usually not going to come up with all the music and things like that. So... Of course, everything is a collaboration, but the way it came together was really pretty special. Like the guitarist had a bunch of chords, and and Ronnie Van Zant was like, "That's that, that, that's not going to work. I can't put that to music. I can't put lyrics to that because there were so many chord changes." And so the guitarist went back and kind of didn't really change it. I mean, he had other parts that did work, so they worked on that. But then he didn't change that. But then when they were practicing the song, he played that. And then Ronnie Van Zant liked it, even though he couldn't do the lyrics to it. So Ronnie Van Zant was telling him, okay, can you extend that out so that the chord change doesn't happen so quickly so that I can get lyrics to it? And so they did that. And then they added in a big guitar solo at the end, which they simply did just to give Ronnie Van Zant time to rest. Because this is when they were performing a lot live. They were doing many sets. And so he needed time to rest his voice in between songs. And it ended up being one of the most famous guitar solos probably ever. The Freebird guitar solo. If you talk to any music any music lover, especially someone who likes rock music uh, in the U.S., and you ask them about Freebird, they're going to mention the guitar solo. And, and, then the, and then they had the piano player who added a piece at the beginning. Um, and, and they and they were really all these separate pieces 
that they all developed on their own. That's why I say it was a great collaboration, because they put it all together at the end and came up with this incredible song. All right, so let's go to the song. Let's listen to this song. Uh, as usual, for those of you joining us on YouTube, you're going to need to click on the link on the upper right to go watch the video. This Actually, there was never a real video made for this, so it is just a music-only video. There's just a still picture with it. So if you just want to look the song up somewhere and listen to it elsewhere, you can do that as well. But we will have a link for you in the upper right to the video. And for those of you streaming or listening on radio, you should be able to hear it just fine. And if you're listening on radio, you're not going to miss anything with the video because there's no video. It's just the music. All right, so let's get to the song. Musical musings, musical musings, musical musings, musical musings. Okay, welcome back. Like I said, that was a song that's just about being free. And you can see the lyrics were pretty simple. So in order to save some time here, I told you we have to be pretty quick. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly. There's not a lot here. There are a few things that might be a little confusing. A few kind of difficult ideas, sayings, things like that that are in here. Uh, so we'll talk about them. So we start out the song. And sometimes I try to sing for you if you can hear my voice is a little off today. So I'm just going to read the lyrics for you this time through. Uh, so we start off the song, If I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? Okay, so that was a guy kind of singing to a... a actually, I think it was... That came from a girl telling his boyfriend that. Um, I believe it was the girl that told the boyfriend that. Uh, the boyfriend was in the band. And they just added it to the beginning of the song because it fit with everything else so well. Um, but they do it from the perspective of a man, even though it came from a girl, because the, the song is from the perspective of a man uh, throughout the rest of it. So it's saying, if I leave here tomorrow, will you still remember me? That means exactly what it sounds like. Because, his, because again, the song is about freedom. So in the song, the guy is basically talking about leaving his girlfriend which is kind of weird because, you know, is that really freedom? That's kind of sad, right? You're breaking up, whatever. But, you know, that's that was kind of the idea behind the song. It's to gain that freedom. I mean, some people do think relationships are like being in a trap. I don't, <laughs> but some people, some people do. So the freedom comes from getting away from those responsibilities, having another person controlling you, whatever it is. Uh, and if you and in the lyrics to the song, you can tell that it's not like he doesn't like his girlfriend. He just wants to be free. That's all. So if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? For I must be traveling on now. Okay? When you say traveling on, that just means kind of like continuing. So it's time for him to go. Apparently he's been traveling a lot, and now he's with this girl, and now he's saying, okay, I'm out of here. I got to keep traveling. So I must be traveling on now because there's too many places I've got to see. Okay, that's simple. So again, he's talking about traveling around. He wants to see the world. He wants to, he doesn't want to stay in that one place. And maybe his girlfriend has to stay there, maybe because of a job or whatever. So he doesn't want to. And that's why I say you can tell from the nature of the song it's not like he doesn't like his girlfriend. He just wants to be free, so he wants to travel. And apparently his girlfriend can't. So he has to be traveling on now because there's too many places he has to see. Okay? But if I stay here with you, girl, things just couldn't be the same. Because I'm as free as a bird now, and this bird you cannot change. Okay, so... He says things couldn't be the same if he stayed there. It's probably because he's not going to be happy. And so it's going to be a bad relationship. Because, again, he wants to travel. He wants to go. He wants his freedom. And, in fact, that's what he says after that. He says, because I'm as free as a bird now, and this bird you cannot change. So, all right. So here we do have a saying which is a little weird. What does that mean, free as a bird? What does that mean? 
That is a saying we have in English. Just think of a bird. Flies through the sky. Goes anywhere it wants to go. Can fly anywhere. That's where we come up with the saying, free as a bird. Because birds are free. They travel anywhere. They're flying through the sky. So, cause I'm as, so I'm as free as a bird now, and this bird you cannot change. In other words, he knows he's not going to change. He, he, his freedom is important to him. Like I said, these folks from the South, they, <laughs> they think they have the monopoly. They think they own freedom. Um, frankly, they're not that free, actually, like I said. There are a lot of sort of like civil liberties, like things that people are allowed to do that we think of in today's world that in the southern part of the U.S. they still don't allow. Uh, they probably have the least freedoms of anywhere in America, even though a lot of people, when they think of America, they think of freedom. The southern part of America probably has the least amount of freedoms. But for some weird reason, the people that live there, they think they have, they think they have the greatest freedoms. Uh, so... This bird you cannot change. You know, he's a southerner. He's going to be free his whole life. All right. Then it repeats that line a couple times. And then it says, Lord knows I can't change. This is a very simple saying when you say Lord knows, but it may not be something you're familiar with because when we use the word Lord, that's kind of a Christian term. And here in Thailand, where it's more Buddhist, more of a Buddhist country, you may not be familiar with that saying. When it says, Lord knows I can't change, that's almost not really a, a idiom. An idiom is where you say something where it doesn't mean exactly what it says. This almost does mean exactly that. It says, Lord knows. In other words, God. Lord is the same as God. God knows. So basically, even God knows that he cannot change. So, yeah, he's not going to change. He needs his freedom. Okay, we continue on. Bye-bye, baby. It's been a sweet love. Yeah, yeah. So again, again, he's not hating on his girlfriend. He says it's been a sweet love. When we say sweet love, you think of sweet like sugar. We use that word sweet to mean like very nice in a loving way. Kind of a, so a sweet love is, is very good. It's a very nice, they had a very nice relationship together. Though this feeling, I can't change. So again, he's saying he can't, you know, he needs his, he, again, he's getting back to that whole thing about how he needs his freedom. He can't, he can't change how he feels. He loves her. They had some good times. They had a good relationship, but he's got to go. He's got to go. He needs his freedom. And then he says, please don't take it so badly because Lord knows I'm to blame. All right. When we say don't take it so badly, when we say don't take it, that saying means, when he says don't take it so badly, it means don't feel bad. Don't feel badly about it. So don't be so sad. And then, he, and then in the next line he says why. Because he says, because Lord knows, again we have Lord knows again there, I'm to blame. So he's taking the blame because he understands. It's all about him. It's all about him, needs his freedom, wants to get going. That's why he's leaving. So it has nothing to do with her. So that's why he's telling her, don't take it so badly. So in other words, don't feel badly about them splitting up. He's not doing it because of her. He thinks she's great. He loves her. He thinks she's wonderful. But he just needs to go. All right. So then it repeats the line we heard earlier. But if I stay here with you, girl, things just couldn't be the same. Because I'm as free as a bird now, and this bird you'll never change. All right, and that's pretty much all of it. Uh, we do have a little bit where it says, Lord, help me, I can't change. Um, and then it ends with, won't you fly high, free bird? Okay, when we talk about, there, so that is one last little thing that might be a little tricky to understand. We understand free bird now, right? Okay, because birds are free. But uh, why is it important about flying high? Well, when a bird is flying high, it, I don't know why. Maybe because the sky is so big and the bird looks so small from that high, it looks even freer. 
Think about a bird that flies really high. Like think about if you see an eagle or a falcon in the sky. They're usually by themselves, really far away, so they look pretty small in the sky. All sky around them. They're just by themselves, going wherever they want. It just looks like freedom. Look, uh, They're just by themselves. No one to bother them. Doing whatever they want. Everything is in their control. So when a bird is flying high, it's like an it's really like an emphasis on that free bird, on the bird being free. Okay, and then like I said, the song has a big long um, guitar solo at the end, and then that's that. So that's all for this song. Now again, now with most of these bands that I talk about, I try to promote some of their other songs. As I mentioned before, again, Leonard Skinner doesn't have many great songs. And that's just because of the tragedy that ended the band so early. Uh, So they do have Sweet Home Alabama and another song called That Smell, which are two of their best other songs other than Free Bird. Free Bird is probably their best song. Like I said, Sweet Home Alabama got a little more popular. Um, But most people like Free Bird better. Free Bird just didn't get as much airtime on the radio because it's too long. Uh, Now, Sweet Home Alabama actually does bother some people, even though it got really popular. If you understand the meaning behind it, it's really, it's really a little bit sketchy. It's a response to Neil Young's song, Southern Man. And the song Southern Man criticizes the southern U.S. for having slavery. You may know that in the U.S. we had a big civil war in the 1800s between the North and the South. The North was trying to get rid of slavery. The South wanted to keep it. Um, So Neil Young is criticizing the South for trying to keep slavery. And, and, you know, it's it's fine for Leonard Skinner to be proud of where they're from. That's fine. It's fine to take pride in being from the South uh, because a lot of the most people that lived in the South didn't actually have slaves. They weren't wealthy enough to. So, you know, it's not like everyone in the South was a slave owner or supported having slaves or anything like that. There were plenty of good and decent people in the South, even when they had slaves. So it's fine to be proud of where you're from. But with this song, it's a really weird approach. It's really weird. I mean, for one thing, why why are they talking about Alabama? I told you the band's from Jacksonville. Jacksonville in, in Florida. The band's from Florida. Alabama is another state. It's, it's near Florida, but it's not Florida. They're from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, a couple of the band members are from other places, yes, but none of them are from Alabama. <laughs> no one is from Alabama. Okay, so that's just, that's just kind of weird. I guess maybe they just think Alabama is kind of like the epitome of the South, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I would have chosen Mississippi, but maybe that doesn't fit as well into a song. Um, and another reason it's weird, though, is that if you're going to defend your heritage, I don't think you'd do it by attacking Neil Young's song, Southern Man. I mean, Southern Man is specifically anti-slavery, Attacking that song, which this directly does, in fact, in fact, Sweet Home Alabama actually mentions Neil Young in it, uh, attacking the song makes you come off as though you're pro-slavery, as if you're for slavery. It's really weird. So when you listen to the song, just understand what it's about. It's not a, uh, as far as the topic, it's not really a very good song. I mean, it's okay, because again, they're just talking about their southern their southern pride, their southern heritage. I mean, that's fine. The way they do it is rather, yeah, you know, distasteful. I mean, it makes it sound like they're in favor of slavery. I'm sure they were not. I'm sure they were not. Most musicians in America are kind of lean towards the liberal side, and even those that don't, they're at least a little bit liberal on issues like that. Almost all of them, like, for example, Charlie Daniels is another guy that's kind of a, 
He's more of an Appalachian kind of country rock singer, uh, more than Southern rock. Uh, we did hit, we talked about him before on this show, but it's very, very similar. And he's conservative, Christian guy. And even him, when it come to, came to issues like this, he was pretty open-minded, pretty liberal on an issue like this. So, so I, I'm sure the Leonard Skinner guys were not being pro-slavery, but that's the way it comes across. It's really a weirdly executed song. So if you listen to the song, just understand that. Understand what it's about. But I have no problem with anyone listening to the song because, again, I don't think that's what they meant anyway. You're not supporting a slavery song. That's not what they were. That's not what they were trying to trying to do there. They just didn't write it that well. But that's the lyrics. The music is actually quite awesome. It's a great song. As I told you before, it became even more popular than Freebird. I do think Freebird's better. I explained to you why why Sweet Home Alabama became more popular. Um, but but I mean, Sweet Home Alabama got into the top ten. That's really good. That's really high on the charts. So it's a really great song musically. Just understand what you're listening to. That's all. But it's a great song. So go ahead and listen to it. Again, that's Sweet Home Alabama. Their other big hit, That Smell, was a little bit less popular. It's pretty weird. I mean, that smell. What are they? What are you talking about? A smell. That's a weird thing to write a song about, and it is kind of weird and unique. It's a it's a bit of a weird song, but it's also worth checking out. It's a it's a kind of a fun song. It's uh, the music again. The music in that song is great. Uh, these guys were fantastic musicians. Their music was awesome. So uh, go ahead and enjoy their music. Go look them up again. It's Leonard Skinnerd. L-Y-N-Y-R-D, S-K-Y-N-Y-R-D, Leonard Skinnerd. Thank you for joining us for today's Musical Musings program. Please stay with us and make sure you tune back in next week for another great song. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Musical Musings, Musical Musings, Musical